गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग सर a very good morning sangli se bol a very good morning to all the dignitaries delegates guests participants and dear students it gives me immense pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome on behalf of air shikshan sansaz bhavan college vita department of zoology in collaboration with range forest officer khanapur forest department sangli organizes wildlife week celebration 2022 on a theme recovering key species for ecosystem restoration i welcome today's resource person honorable dr pramod kambe sir assist assistant professor in department of environmental science savitri bai phule pune university pune also welcome president of this program honorable principal dr mori sir principal bhavan college vita organizing secretary of this program dr sv poor ma'am assistant professor department of zoology bhavan college vita coordinator of this program mr ajay patil sir head and assistant professor department of zoology bhavan college vita co coordinator of this program ms p a perke ma'am assistant professor department of zoology bhavan college vita now i would like to invite ms p a perke ma'am to introduce today's resource person honorable dr pramod kamre sir good morning everyone a warm welcome to chief guest of today's session of wildlife week 2022 dr pramod kamle sir assistant professor department of environmental science savitri bai phule pune university pune it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our chief guest dr kamle sir sir has completed his bsc in zoology from shivaji university kolhapur msc in environmental science from shivaji university kolhapur sir is awarded with phd from pune university in 2012 in environmental science the research area for his doctoral studies was nutrient limiting factors for bacterial and fungal growth in soils differing in nutrition nutrient availability he has got prestigious erasmus mundus fellowship from sweden university for the doctoral research for the period of 5 years sir has 15 years of teaching experience dr kamle sir is currently working as assistant professor department of environmental science savitri bai phule pune university pune from 2016 before that he was working as assistant professor in pg department of environmental science pvp college pravranagar from 2007 to 2016 sir is a recognized phd and mphil guide of pune university he also recognized pg teacher currently three phd students are pursuing phd under his guidance one student is awarded with mphil under his guidance his area of research interest are environmental ecology environmental biology environmental biotechnology nutrient limiting bacterial and fungal growth etc sir is expert in water and soil quality analysis culture techniques of bacteria and fungi present in soil sir has completed two uh, research projects funded by savitri bai phule pune university pune uh, sir has published the 20 research papers in reputed international journals with high impact factor he is also presented research papers in various national and international conferences and seminars sir has delivered invited talks in various national international conferences and seminars he is also actively engaged in various academic positions in pune and uh, with this brief introduction i would like to invite dr kamle sir to please guide our students thank you very much yes thank you uh, 
Abedge Madam for nice introduction. And I'm very much thankful to uh, Dr. R.S. More, Principal of Balwan College, then um, Range Forest Officer, uh, A.V. Kamble from like Khanapur, then uh, uh, Poor Madam, Organizing Secretary, and Head of the Department Zoology and Coordinator of uh, this uh, auspicious program uh, that is Wildlife Week celebration uh, organized by uh, the Balon College Vita. And also I'm very much thankful to organizing team for inviting me for this precious occasion. So now I'm going to start with my presentation. My slides are visible. Yes, sir, your slides are visible. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the biodiversity, the threats and conservation mechanism and how climate change is affecting to the biodiversity. So, more or less, like more, most of the people do know what is biodiversity and how it is being destroyed due to the human activities. And basically, anthropogenic activities are causing huge amount of damage to the um, biodiversity. And then uh, if you look at the uh, perspective of biodiversity conservation, uh, nowadays the people are thinking about the effective implementation of conservation policies. And forest department is very keen to implement such kind of the activities in order to conserve biodiversity of the nation. So if you look at the uh, definition, like if you look at the definition of bi biodiversity, so uh, what it is actually. So it is simply means diversity of variety of plants and animals and other living things in a forested area or a particular geographical area. So basically, when you go look at or if you would like to quantify the particular biodiversity, we uh, initially think about the number, then their abundance and their species diversity. So in that particular time unit area. Then there are certain other things has been mentioned by various uh, people and most of the nation's growth and wealth is totally dependent on the availability of the biological diversity. And biological diversity plays a very important role. All the, most of the people say that uh, uh, ecology and economy are the two sides of the same coin. So in that perspective, the economic and human development and human survival is totally dependent on the natural resources. And natural resources are basically related to the biological diversity. So basically, if you look at the historical perspective of biodiversity, the very first time the world biodiversity was coined by the Walter Rosen in 1986 and uh, through National Forum and Simtos Nasonian Institute, Washington. And it like it was appeared in a a series of journals like biodiversity, tropical biodiversity and biodiversity letters and global biodiversity and so on. Nowadays, there are huge amount of number of uh, journals has been published on the name of the biodiversity. So nature also is one of the kind of the nature biodiversity. It, is, it can be a best example of the renowned journal in the field of biodiversity. Then uh, if you look at the definitions, the definition has been given by various organizations according to IUC and UNAP, the total totally a totality of the genes species and ecosystem in a region is the simplest definition of the iocean like uh, given by iocean or related to biodiversity then castro in 90s, 1996 like uh, given the definition and it's, he says that it is an ensemble and interaction of genes species and ecological uh, diversity at a given place and time and another definition can be like biological diversity to variety and variability among living organism and ecological complexes in which they occur. And also it can be defined as the diversity of life. Basically it includes the full range of variety and variability within and among living organism and uh, the forested complexes in which they occur and encompass ecosystem or community diversity 
patient diversity and genetic diversity. Then if you look at the Indian scenario, how we are contributing towards the biodiversity conservation and how much amount of biodiversity we do have. Basically, we are having 2.4% of the world area. We are occupying 2.4% of world area. But however, we are consist of 7.31% uh, uh, part of the global faunal diversity, having uh, the 8, 8, 18, uh, 89,451 species uh, in particular uh, India. And uh, basically, if you look at the kingdoms, India has two major kingdoms, and it's basically Palartic and indo -Malayan. So in Palartic basically belong to the region of the Earth's surface, which includes all Europe to the Azores island and all temperate issues. Like if you go to the north part of India, you will see such kind of the climatic conditions. And another Indo-Malayan, uh, that is Indo-Malayan Relay, is one of the eight biogeographic region Relay, which is present in uh, India. And it extends across the South and Southeast Asia and into the Southern part of East Asia. And it is one of the very important uh, um, biodiversity hotspot. And most of the people are doing research related to all these particular um, areas. Then it consists of three biomass, like uh, tropical humid forest, then tropical dry or deciduous forest and warm desert areas. So this kind of the um, uh, diversity of forest is there. And around 10 biogeographic regions are included in uh, India, like basically trans Himalayan, then Himalayan and Indian desert, then semi-arid zone, the Western Ghats and Deccan Peninsula and Gangetic Plains and Northeast India and Ireland and coast. These are the some of the 10 uh, important bi bi biogeographic regions are located in India. Then again, uh, if you look at the agriculture biodiversity or managed biodiversity, we are the one of the 12th center of the world uh, where the we are origin of the cultivated plants. And it is having uh, like five world heritage sites in India, biodiversity uh, heritage in India. The 12 biosphere reserves are located in India. Six Ramsar wetland sites are uh, recognized sites are present in India. Uh, protected areas around 88 national parks are there and four ninety centuries, uh, more than, five, now it is more than 500 centuries, uh, covering around uh, 1.53 lakh square kilometer area in India is uh, under covered by the forested area and uh, various organizations, those are looking after the conservation mechanism of the biodiversity. Then also it records the agrobiodiversity is equally impression. So uh, in India, more than 167 crop species are there. And uh, it is center of origin of uh, 30,000 to 50,000 varieties of rice. That is pigeon pea, mango, and then again, turmeric, ginger, sugarcane, gooseberries. So these are the some of the crop varieties are basically originated from India and it is come under the ag agrobiodiversity. Then uh, in case of the number, we are seventh position in terms of contribution to world agriculture sector. And we are one of the uh, very uh, good agriculture producers in the world. And we are uh, mostly exporting huge amount of agriculture goods to the world. Then division, if you look at the diversity divisions, there are three types of divisions on the basis of the area. Like for, first is alpha diversity, then beta diversity and gamma diversity. So alpha is basically uh, restricted to the only one ecosystem as we express the number of species. Then beta diversity is like basically, uh, it is related to the uh, diversity between ecosystem and one or two ecosystem. And in case of gamma, it is related to the uh, large geographical area. So, for example, India is the example of beta diversity. Maharashtra is example of the alpha diversity. And gamma is the example of um, uh, world biodiversity. So, types of biodiversity. When you think of the uh, types of biodiversity, that time you have to think about all these aspects like genetic diversity, species diversity, taxonomic diversity, then survey, patterns in time, then patterns in space, and dimensionless patterns. Then genetic diversity, basically it is very important source of the 
uh, genetic like diversity and it can be stored very nicely and it is almighty because genetic genes is one of the very uh, important segment of the um, biodiversity lives for longer duration for it is there is no any death for the gene just it is transferred from one generation to the next generation and it because of that we need to conserve genetic diversity and focus tend to be on individual species like most of the species are like on the way of extinction and because of that we have to think about the conservation of genetic diversity of such species and it is basically it is not um, possible with the fossils but it is having a great utility in conservation and management of rare species already I did mention how it is very useful in order to conserve the ext uh, extinction extinct species or rare species those are uh, present in ecosystem and in preservation of habitat for rare species often beneficial for other species like basically when you look at the uh, surrogate uh, uh, diversity or uh, forested area in that case we can develop a surrogate kind of the forest area in by using the rare species genetic diversity the species richness like another very important uh, characteristic for biodiversity two main aspect it includes in this particular species the species richness and species abundance so basically species in this particular thing we talk about number we do quantify the number of species in the area and it's basically uh, uh, can be utilized as a baseline for the taxonomic data and species abundance like it is relatively commonness or occurrence of this particular uh, species in that particular area and it could be a one of the very important uh, baseline ecological data in order to develop a certain kind of the policies. The taxonomic diversity, so it is a richness of higher taxonomic categories, like basically uh, the father of taxonomy is Carl Linnaeus. So he has uh, uh, given us very nice uh, mechanism in order to uh, give nomenclature to the plants and animals, and he has given us several kind of the uh, uh, importance, uh, important uh, mechanism in order to provide uh, a name naming system to the each and every plant. Some assign a higher conservation value to innocent or very distinct lineages. So uh, nowadays, the people, uh, it is a bit difficult for people to identify the names of uh, animals and plants, scientific names and animals, and they are very bit difficult to remember. So because of that, Taxonomy plays a very important role in case of um, uh, identifying the plant for the conservation mechanism. Then dimensionless pattern, like ideally should combine both taxonomy and ecology together in order to uh, develop a new pattern, like depends on flora, IDs provided description for all plants and areas. So in this particular, uh, by using this particular uh, taxonomic and ecological knowledge, we can think about the regeneration of forest uh, area and also whatever area is there under the forest floor, uh, we can think about the, how to conserve that particular available forest. So this is how dimensionless pattern can be utilized in order to uh, conserve the forest area. Then survey, so all types of biodiversity inventory, inventory has been developed by various organization and then some relatively large areas represent different habitats would be completely in, in, in inventoried for all groups. And also analysis of such uh, patterns of diversity, abundance, interaction uh, could be uh, useful for the assessment of biodiversity in the similar areas. And uh, by getting this data, we can have a certain kind of the uh, mechanism where we can think about the implementation of certain government policies which are related to the uh, conservation of biodiversity and basically also we can do a very a good quality research by using this uh, method then pattern in time like increase in total diversity over evolutionary time then succession we do know succession how it is basically um, uh, uh, happens in ecosystem primary section and secondary succession how uh, r selected and k selected species are there and they are basically helping for the uh, succession of the ecosystem and the reaches to the climax community. Then yes, obviously seasonal variation plays a very important role. Like there are uh, various categorization of plants, like uh, seasonal plants are there, like some plants grow in winter only, some plants grow in a rainy season. Uh, 
uh, and uh, annual plants are there. Uh, uh, annual plants or seasonal plants are there. So variation among the ecosystem is there on the basis of the availability of the resources has been done by the nature itself. An increase in total biodiversity, like if you look at the uh, earth uh, history or like uh, evol evolution of the earth was happened in 3.8 billion years ago. And initially the eukaryotes appeared by 1.5 to 1.25 billion years ago. And then the diversification of associated with the new adaptation mechanism has been uh, developed. And if you look at the primary section is the best example of adaptation mechanism in order to develop the uh, biodiversity. Then overall pattern is one of the increasing diversity in evolutionary time, despite background extinction and five mass extinction events was happened. Uh, these, both the extinction events were not uh, caused any damage, not have caused damage to the development of biodiversity or evolution of biodiversity. Still, we can see the tropical forest, desert forest, and every kind of the variety of diversity among us because of the evolution of biodiversity. But nature has its own course of action to do all these things. Then succession already did mention like how it is being happened. Like often species replace each other in more uh, or less orderly sequence. So if you look at the primary succession, lichen and mosses basically uh, uh, develop on a bare rock and then do uh, they do absorb the atmospheric nitrogen and atmospheric mixture and other gases which are required for the growth purpose and then automatically after a certain period of time they provide condition uh, condition atmosphere for secondary succession then the migration of uh, uh, case electric takes place and they do utilize that condition atmosphere created by our selective species in order to develop their own uh, atmosphere or environment. And this is how the succession, secondary succession begins after the primary succession. And then we can see the, uh, the result of all this, both the succession or processes is the uh, climax community. And we can see the forested area after uh, succession. Then immigration and competitive dis displacement, migration and immigration is a common process in case of the succession. And it creates both spatial and temporal patterns following the disturbance, like for example, forest fire are there, then natural calamities like landslides and n numbers of activities are taking place within like cyclones or heavy rainfall also cause of the uh, disturbance in ecosystem. And basically, but the natural mechanism is there after disturbance, again, it uh, subjected to the succession and the succession process is one of the very prominent process in the ecosystem, which helps to the redevelop the uh, ecosystem very nicely. The seasonal variation, annual cycle of diversity, the migration, dormancy, hibernation and endangered phenomena are included here and basically they, uh, they govern the mechanism of uh, biodiversity. In annual migration, many birds, some insects migrate on annual basis like European birds do, do come to uh, India in, or, in, in order to uh, get a favorable atmosphere for breeding as well as uh, in order to get food. Then dormancy, members of biota disappear physiologically during the winter or drought periods like for us, there are certain frogs, they do that like there are n numbers of example. In desert also such kind of the uh, event uh, can be seen uh, very regularly. The loss of biodiversity is hidden in this way. So uh, we, if you look at the uh, dormancy, so n numbers of organisms follow this particular mechanism. And uh, yeah. Then endangered phenomena, it is like uh, basically, uh, it is life history and uh, those animal or plant species in all large numbers of individuals that is threatened uh, with improve, improvement or decline. Basically, uh, if you look at, the endangered phenomena. So most of the species are endangered. They are on the way of uh, extinct, on the way of extinction, or maybe the number of uh, this particular species is decline very rapidly. And such species are come under the endangered phenomena. So in case of uh, ecological diversity associated flooding rivers, the seventy years and thirteen years of Sika uh, the emergence events. In, uh, North America, animal migration has been taken place, the existence of species in 
huge hurts is uh, there like for example um, during the migration the killing of uh, the, the wild beast is taking place so it is a common phenomena in case of the, the migration behavior so then pattern is based like species area cover then habitat diversity then latent gradient areas of endemism and disturbance these are the some of the points that we are uh, we have to think in um, uh, pattern space then i'm not going to explain it because it is the really habitat diversity yes it is uh, <coughs> diversity within that particular habitat so <clears throat> not only single species is growing in that particular habitat but if you take the example of terrestrial uh, habitat it contains huge amount of biodiversity and it is a complex uh, community and uh, the greater the species diversity it is greater the uh, habitat so this is how it correlated to the habitat diversity and uh, basically the um, uh, population or community population plays a very crucial role in maintaining the uh, habitat diversity balance the natural net gradients then yeah so endemic so endemic plants basically uh, the those uh, it is like most of the time it is called as a native plant or restricted to that particular geographical area or that particular habitat such uh, plants or animals are called as a endemic species and most of the time it is uh, come under the hotspot and most of the endemism occurs in hotspots biodiversity hotspots like western ghat having huge amount of population of endemic plants uh, plants and animals so non randomly distributed on earth only the, uh, they are restricted to the several geographical areas for example um, hotspot uh, uh, western ghat hotspot which is a home of so many endemic plants those are native in india native in india okay so yeah then disturbances yes, uh, diversity peaks or intermediate disturbances levels are there so various kind of the disturbance like human activity natural activities are there and some mass extinction uh, basically not is the not the cause of the uh, disturbance but yes however if you look at the other factors those are causing damage to the ecosystem are mainly forest fire flooding conditions sea level rise global warming climate change uh, in the climate change associated events those are basically creating huge amount of damage to the uh, ecosystem in dimension patterns like rotate in space time per se like reproductive rate then longevity body mass metabolism ratio so and then food even food chain the intrusion of pollutants and how pollutants are creating damage to the food chain and food web so basically uh, basically uh, basically we are uh, nowadays facing the problem of biomagnification mechanism a very significant and causing damage to the pattern of food chain and food web and uh, it has been found out that key it, it is affecting very drastically and it is creating damage on the longevity of the um, uh, wild animals then concept of framework and typology of drivers for decline in biodiversity so what are the reasons behind the decline in biodiversity and loss of biodiversity basically if you look at the uh, climate change yes it is causing huge amount of damage to the biodiversity and nowadays the species certain species are able to adapt to this particular climate change but however it is a bit difficult to them to handle the extreme conditions and some metabolic changes are occurring within the uh, uh, animal bodies or biodiversity so later part we are going to see how like there are several examples has been occurred related to that how climate change is affecting to the biodiversity then land use change or lulc uh, basically affecting to the biodiversity so initially if you take the example of uh, civilization so civilization or development of civilization happens since law ancient era initially we converted forested land uh, into the agriculture land and then we are converting agriculture land into non agriculture land and now we are uh, developing the residential area or basically we are promoting cement jungle 
by doing such activities and this is one of the major cause of decline in a biodiversity so if you look at the driver pressure state impact response the psir so it is one of the very important framework developed by the economic cooperation and development european union and this uh, they have discussed about the how, what kind of drivers that are responsible for creation uh, creating damage to the biodiversity am i audible madam yes sir yes so basically if you look at the driving forces uh, for the decline in the biodiversity basically socio economic and socio cultural forces driving human activities which increase or mitigate the pressure on the environment for example uh, the need of the human being is huge and there is uh, we do have a, a various kind of the social masses and the different need of the uh, social masses are varies according to their uh, level of economic level and also socio cultural impact of this particular uh, human being is huge on the biodiversity so in in order to extract the natural resources uh, basically we are creating extra burden on the biodiversity so through this activities uh, we can see the we are creating extra pressure on the ecosystem like stresses that human activities place on the environment for example generation of the wastewater so wastewater release into the aquatic ecosystem in aquatic e ecosystem is basically affected by wastewater so like if you take the example of panchanga river this is one example huge amount of biodiversity loss has been occurred there only chilap species or very like invasive species are growing very nicely uh, even uzni dam backwater uh, same condition is there so chilap uh, fish, uh, fish is only growing very nicely and rest all the native species has been uh vanished from that particular uh, uh river bodies so this is one of the one example but however if we take the example of industrial activities so they are creating huge amount of pollution into the atmosphere and it is not only affecting wild animals it also affecting to the human health and most of the people are affected by cancer in, uh, in several cities we are expecting that particular uh, impact of uh, pressure created by human being itself then state of the environment like condition of environment like uh, what kind of air is there and water quality so here i would say ki we can think about the covid conditions and in a study has been done and they have found out that ki baba the air polluted area have uh, observed significant uh, rate of uh, significant higher rate of the mortality regarding the covid patient and however in a normal conditions wherever the air is uh, uh like breathable or pure in that cases the mortality of related to the covid patient is very less and this is like one example how environment can uh, create uh, impact on the health of the uh, human being not only human being but other living organisms then impacts for example effect of environmental degradation then it will result it into the biodiversity loss and economic damage this obviously so people are thinking about uh, short term benefit but if they, if they think uh, uh, about the long term benefit definitely they are going to have a very nice uh, conducive atmosphere and economic development also but however the people are uh, people who like to earn huge amount of money by doing various activity, activities like um, for example modern agriculture technologies application of modern agriculture technology in that uh, we are uh, using indiscriminate uh, chemicals and um, pesticides in order to get more crop production but it is not sustainable like we have seen that the impact of um, like uh, green uh, revolution which was happen in 1964 then responses given by society by like for example to the environmental situations uh, most of the time the people are now uh, become aware about this all the situation and they are trying to uh, produce cleaner productions and also there are certain rules and regulations has been developed by government authorities in order to conserve biodiversity and also to mitigate the pollution levels and these are the some of the things that we need to understand very rigorously in order to conserve the biodiversity then direct drivers which have a direct impact on a biodiversity 
and indirect drivers like whose impact are more diffuse like both are equally uh, creating damage to the ecosystem so you can see what kind of drivers are there okay then another very important uh, linking between indirect and direct drivers uh, to human well being so basically on uh, y axis indicate short term and long term and in case of uh, y axis indicate global and local so if you look at the human well being uh, uh, it includes like poverty reduction so basically we would like to have uh, basic material for good life then also we need to have a standard life uh, and health also then good social relations then security freedom of choice and action so that was like basically in our constitution amendment has been made and each and every issue has been addressed very properly the indirect drivers of change like demographic changes then economic conditions socio political changes then science and technology and culture and re religious so various kind of the socio economic drivers are the demography obviously population it plays a very important role and it creates uh, demand of resources and ultimately when we do have huge amount of population yes definitely we are going to create extra pressure on environment and also each and every country would like to become a superpower economic superpower and uh, through that mechanism we are ex exploiting our natural resources then socio political uh, issues like as yes, people would like to have control on natural resources and because of that we are getting war uh, in world like for example uh, gulf countries are basically facing the problem of wars and it did there is no question of religion but they would like to have control of control on oil resources and because of that they are fighting with each other and also how science and technology but science is growing industrialization is growing and basically they are creating uh, damage to the biodiversity it's up to certain level they are very useful science also talks about the development and for example medicinal pills is helping us to uh, live a healthy life but at the same time it is creating damage to the biodiversity and culture and religious changes like there are certain cultures like if you go to the tribal area they do have a certain kind of the culture and religions like each and every religion has told us that we do we should uh, show sympathy towards nature and we should conserve the nature for the sake of future generation and also to live a healthy life at, uh, for the present generation then again if we look at the direct drivers of change like change in land use species introduction of removal then technology adoption and use then external inputs then resource consumption pattern is basically creating huge amount of damage and yes climate change climate change like affecting very drastically to the biodiversity and the natural physical and biological uh, drivers are there and ecosystem services are there so this is how the basically uh, uh, ecosystem services would like basically most of the time do keep control on all these activities like ecological processes are there and nature has own course of uh, mechanism in order to maintain the ecosystem balance but however by human activities uh, this particular ecosystem services are uh, not useful at all because they are like their uh, role is very limited but however the human uh, intrusion and human uh, impact are huge as compared to the uh, ecosystem services then if you look at the direct, indirect drivers like social science and technology culture religion demography economy socio political issues then direct drivers like mining activity is yes, mining activity damaging huge amount of uh, damage to the like creating creating huge amount of damage to the biodiversity like uh, if you take the example of bauxite mining which is happening in kondagat west western ghat region they are creating huge amount of damage to the bi biodiversity then biological invasion so invasion species uh, invasive species uh, growth is happens very rigorously then biological conversion the conversion of forested land into the agricultural land and so on the land conversion mechanism then plant nutrient use the exploitation of mining of nutrient through plants then climate change and then natural disasters and water stresses all are the direct drivers so drought condition are basically responsible for creation of the biodiversity loss the exogenous drivers that cannot be uh, considered altered by decision makers 
at certain scale, but influence his or her decision are called exogenous drivers. And endogenous, like basically drivers, such drivers that are the decision makers at a particular scale can influence. So whatever the decision has been taken by the people that can be influenced on the implementation of policies. Then natural causes uh, of this particular biodiversity loss. So if we take the example of uh, narrow geographical areas where uh, they are subjected to the having landslides, otherwise uh, maybe um, uh, forest fires. Then low population areas also uh, the basically responsible for loss in biodiversity, low breeding rates of the uh, wild animals, it is one of the reasons behind the uh, biodiversity loss. Then natural disasters uh, which are coming, they are frequently happening. And then if you take the example of anthropogenic causes like habitat modification is one of the best uh, example of anthropogenic causes, then overexploitation of selected species, then innovation by exotic, exotic species. So exotic species are basically causing huge damage to the biodiversity loss. Then, yeah, so some 75% of the genetic diversity of crop plants have been lost in the past century. So this is one of the very uh, important recent uh, issues that has been uh, studied here. So some scientists estimate that as many as three species per hour, three species per hour is going extinct. And the number is 20,000 extinct per year. So this is huge amount of extinction of species is taking place. And roughly one third of the world coral reef system have been destroyed or highly degraded due to the pollution. Uh, nowadays, the, the phenomena called acid, uh, like ocean acidification, is causing huge amount of damage to the coral reefs. And it's because of uh, excess addition of CO2 into the ocean. So, ocean acts as one of the carbon sequester. But, however, the excess concentration is creating acidic condition in ocean water. And because of that, most of the uh, anim like coral uh, animals or the fauna is facing the problem of habitat loss due to the uh, acidity, uh, development of acidic condition in ocean. About 24% of mammals and 12% of bird species are currently considered to be globally threatened. So this is a huge amount of number. And more than 50% world wetlands uh, basically has lost uh, their existence and it, it has been resulted into huge loss of the biodiversity. Then uh, conservation of biodiversity, how to conserve biodiversity? Like there, we must think about biodiversity inventories. So we have to develop inventories in order to find out the native species and available uh, resources like biodiversity. And then we have to practice the in situ and ex situ conservation mechanism in order to um, conserve the biodiversity. And if, like there are certain examples we can think about as the ex situ mechanism, seed bank development, then gene bank, then pollen bank, and DNA bank can be developed through. Uh, this particular uh, ex situ conservation, implementing ex situ conservation. Then restoration of biodiversity uh, can be useful mechanism, then imparting the environmental education among the local people. This could be one of the way to, to in order to uh, conserve the biodiversity or order to overcome the problem of biodiversity loss. Then enacting, strengthening and enforcing environmental legislation. Then population control, then reviewing the agriculture practice, then controlling the urbanization. So urbanization basically creating huge amount of damage to the biodiversity because every uh, like people are migrating to an urban area like metropolitan cities like Pune, Mumbai, Nashik, Aurangabad that heavily crowded. And uh, because of urbanization, extra pressure is being created on the biodiversity. Then conservation through biotechnology, yes, we do. Uh, have a very nice technologies and uh, the most of the people are working in uh, genetic uh, biotechnology is by using like for example tissue culture the artificial breeding center we can think about the conservation of biodiversity then yes so convention was happening in 1992 on the biodiversity in the rio uh, de janeiro and in that conference they have discussed about the 
conservation of biodiversity, how to implement the policies for the conservation of biodiversity, then how to promote sustainable use of biodiversity, then rational and equitable share of profit to accurate form use of genetic resources. Then by this principle, by using this principle, we have developed joint forest management mechanism in India. So where we are equally distributing the profit which is coming from the uh, forested area. And also second convention in 2002 called World Summit on Sustainable Development, where biodiversity and sustainable ecosystem management was the main issue and discussed thoroughly and the guidelines have been developed in that conference also. Then what is greenhouse effect? We have to think about greenhouse bill. Already we talk about like basics of biodiversity and what kind of scenario regarding the biodiversity. Now we are going to talk about chemistry part of the greenhouse effect. So greenhouse effect basically uh, it is responsible for the uh, development of uh, global warming phenomena within the ecosystem. So there are several gases uh, basically are uh, creating huge amount of uh, chaos within the ecosystem that is uh, methane, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide. And basically, uh, if you look at this particular uh, gases, they have ability to absorb with heat very significantly. And because of that, they considered as a greenhouse gases. So water vapor is having more potential to absorb heat as compared to the other gases. So water vapor is one of the potential greenhouse uh, gas or agent, you can say the agent in present in the atmosphere. And methane is equally uh, responsible for absorbing the radiations which are re-radiated from the earth's surface, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide also responsible for the particular uh, absorbance of uh, radiations. Then if you look at the, if you really would like to understand how it is uh, basically, the sunlight can pass through the windscreen and warm up the inside of the car. Then heat can't get back out through the windscreen. The car becomes hotter. So this is how the uh, insulation or basically absorbance of heat takes place. And due to the uh, cover of the car, the it is a bit difficult to the heat that is absorbed by the inner part of the car to re it into the outer space. But this is how the greenhouse effect can be occurred. So if you look at here, some energy is reflected back, uh, which is like initially the sun energy uh, comes uh, from the sun and radiation on the earth surface and some amount of energy is absorbed by the earth surface and some amount of energy re-radiated into the back into the atmosphere and then earth surface is heated up by the sun and radiation the heat back out towards the space so if you look at the definition of greenhouse effect the it is the phenomena in which the earth atmosphere caps the heat and which is coming from the sun and prevent it into escaping into the outer space because of the presence of layer of the gases. Most of the time CO2 is responsible for the uh, development of greenhouse effect because it very significantly absorbs the UV radiations which are re-radiated from the earth's surface and due to this reason uh, the, the warming of uh, lower atmosphere takes place and this is called as a global warming phenomena and CO2 acts as a blanket in the upper atmosphere and is restrict the moment of heat which is like radiations which is which should go outside of the earth atmosphere but due to the presence of um, co2 uh, it being absorbed by the co2 very significantly because co2 loves heat and this is how the greenhouse effect uh, phenomena is develops then global climate change what is is it like basically uh, identifiable change in the climate of the earth as a whole that lasts for an extended period of time, decades or longer period. For example, uh, uh, it related to the humidity, then the temperature and precipitation. These are the like uh, average change in a uh, climatic conditions like temperature, um, humidity or precipitation is called as a climate change. And basically is global warming uh, is one of the very important output of the 
climate change like when due to the natural process it is usually referred to as a global climate variability but however in thing comes to the change forced by the human activities that change the atmospheric condition so basically heat waves and other things are happening continuously and we have seen that over how climate change is affecting to the biodiversity like in, it will resulted into the sea level rise the acidification and so many activities are activities are going on uh, related to the climate change and they are causing damage to the biodiversity so basically habitat loss can be happen due to the uh, climate change impact then what causes the earth uh, climate uh, like basically uh, what causes earth climate to change there are various kind of the uh, mechanism that are basically responsible for the ch climate change one is change in the atmosphere maybe due to the presence of uh, gases or uh, emission of various gases like if you take the example of uh, human activities are responsible for uh, emission of so many gases uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere through fossil fuel burning vehicular activity industrial activity and uh, n numbers of activities are responsible for that particular mechanism however there there are certain natural processes are there volcanic uh, eruption and tectonic plate movement changes in the sun and shift in the earth's orbit are responsible for emission of or uh, increase in the temperature of the atmosphere and obviously i already did mention about the green, how greenhouse gases are uh, emitted through human activity are responsible for change in climate then global climate change well what to do the data say basically if you take the example of uh, annual anthropogenic greenhouse gases emission it is continuously increasing and now it is increased uh, very rapidly if you take the example of carbon uh, uh, initially it was in 2010 it was 3 uh, 350 ppm now it has crossed the limit of 400 uh, uh, ppm and that now current uh, concentration atmospheric concentration of uh, co2 is 410 ppm so this is how the in, in, increase of concentration with respect to time is taking place and because of uh, basically greenhouse gases and due to the human activity like it, for that particular mechanism industrial activities uh, vehicular activities in forest fire and then agriculture uh, like trash burning all uh, things are responsible then uh, how like what is are the natural process that can cause climate change so basically uh n numbers of natural causes are responsible even if you take the example of decomposition mechanism of uh, so solid waste disposal sites or landfill site this is also one of the very important source of the um uh, greenhouse gases huge amount like h2s then uh, methane and co2 is being emitted during the process of decomposition of solid waste uh, which is disposed of like that on the earth surface and this is one reason uh, a natural uh, reason of the uh, emission of gases into the atmosphere then global climate change what's going on to happen so initially warming is continually of the earth surface will probably occur more quickly than what we have already seen and even if greenhouse gases are stabilized this will probably continue to occur for a century and some maybe effects are maybe for permanent and basically sea level rise will be there for permanent and it is happening since longer period of time so if we take the example of first sea level rise was happened during uh, like 8000 years ago uh, that time of human population growth rate was zero and it was it was happen like uh, sudden 4 meters sea level rise was happened due to the global warming and in result of that uh, in gujarat uh, dwarka is submerged under the uh, sea level rise water so this is how the global warming phenomena is uh, affecting to the um, environment so impact on biodiversity we'll take the example of uh, turtle sea turtle the recent uh, study has been done by the scientists like basically it supposed to be cooler ocean temperature are attributed to the higher productivity of the turtles but moreover uh, due to the rise in temperature uh, the male population has been declined very rapidly and female population uh, has increased very rapidly and because of this particular uh, phenomena 
the sex ratio of this particular um, turtle has been um, declined very uh, rapidly and due to this reason they, they are facing the problem of hatching the legs because uh, basically uh, uh, the turtle population or this sex ratio plays a very important role in the reproduction mechanism and due to this maybe this particular species can very soon maybe uh, uh, on the like it will um, extinct very soon because of the this impact of climate change on or basically temperature impact on the reproduction process okay then other like already did mention coral uh, systems and the other unique system cannot handle higher temperature very well and because of that they are suffering from the um, dilution and uh, the habitat of most of the molluscans animals are declining very rapidly then wildfires uh, basically uh, the number of wildfires will increase like in australia usa amazon forest every year uh, in even in india some part of india we are facing the problem of natural wildfires and it, it's because of global warming then up to 30 percent of species will be at increased risk of for extinction due to the rapid change in their ecosystem. Yes, it, yes, it is quite true. That is basically uh, most of the species are uh, uh, on the like uh, like at risk uh, because of the climate change. And yes, and maybe there is a chance of extinction of such species. The warming in western mountains several apex in the rain will actually help some crops. Hutuals will increase in number, length, and intensity. The coastal communities will be affected by increased flooding and storms condition. Like if, if you take the uh, example of India, so we, every year we are suffering from the flooding conditions. Also, we are uh, suffering from the food shortage mechanism due to the climate change. Then um, recently, the uh, heat waves, like in last summer, we have faced the problem of heat waves and we have lost more than 400 people all over the India due to the heat waves. And this is how like same uh, scenario regarding the wildlife and biodiversity. The heat waves causing huge amount of damage to the biodiversity. In global climate change, so what can we do? So basically, we have to think about the sectors from which like huge amount of emission is taking place. So international bunkers, 2.10%, waste, 3.2%. Then land is changing in forestry, contributing 12.20%. Agriculture, 13.80%. Uh, Industrial processes, 4.30%. And energy sector, 64.5%. And then in case of manufacturing uh, contract, like if you take the example of how energy is being utilized by the various sectors. So manufacturing and construct construction activity uh, like utilizing 11.18%, then transportation 12.20%, other fuel combustion process 8.50%, 8 figurative emission 4%, and electricity and heat 28%. So energy is basically responsible for emission of uh, talk like uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and it has said that key energy utilization pattern is directly proportional to the uh, greenhouse gas emission into the atmosphere so we have to think about key how we can uh, uh, go for the energy sector and we have to promote people in order to like promote people to use the renewable energy sources in order to mitigate the climate change phenomena because renewable energy are relatively uh, producing very less amount of rather no any polluting or uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and because of that we have to follow the rules and regulation like iso 14000 mechanism is there it's basically it promotes local people to enhance the environment quality by applying the guidelines for example green mechanism where we can think about the utilization of renewable energy sources rather than traditional uh, energy sources like coal basically we are uh, utilizing coal uh, as the energy source uh, from the we are using uh, coal for, for generation of thermal energy uh, uh, and that energy is basically utilized by the most of the people so we need to think about how to uh, utilize 
uh, our, how to develop our energy utilization pattern. So if you are able to mitigate our energy needs are also if you minimize the use of traditional uh, energy sources. And we just think about, if you think about the uh, utilization of renewable energy sources, yes, definitely we can able to uh, keep control on the global warming phenomena. It is basically depends on the human mentality. And most of the organizations are looking for this particular solution, like solar energy is one of the best uh, solution and so on. Then thank you, thank you very much. Yes, madam. Any questions? Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. The session is open for discussion. If students have some questions, you can ask Dr. Kamre, sir. A warm and graceful afternoon to our most valued honorable Dr. Pramod Kamle Sir, Shiva Savitribai Pune, Pune University, Pune, organizing committee, teachers, students, and everyone gathered here. It is my honor and privilege now to give a vote of thanks to all those who helped make the Wildlife Week successful. I extend my gratitude to our resource person to take out time for his busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you for inspiring and encouraging us with your words on this wildlife week, all participants inspired by our valuable guidance. My sincere thanks to Honorable Principal Dr. More Saheb Balwan College Vita for his help and support at various stages. I extend my gratitude to our Mr. RJ Patil sir, Head Department of Zoology to organize Wildlife Week I am very much thankful to all our faculty and non-teaching staff members who always stand by us and motivate us. I feel proud and thank you for making this event a successful one. Thank to all students for making this function as a grant. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. May I leave? Yeah. Yes. yes, sir.